The retrieval part of this lesson is looking at what is the purpose of our writing. And the purpose of our writing is to make the reader enjoy what we've done and to entertain the reader. We've got some sounds up here, some digraphs and trigraphs as well. So we've got ch, sh, f, i, e. When I point to them with your child, can you think of what the sounds are and say them aloud? Going to do them out of order this time. Sh, I, E, F, Ch. Again, can you practice with your child? We're going to remind ourselves of the story that we're going to be writing about. Once upon a time, there was a grumpy dragon. He was in a huff because he wanted to be a hero. He was fed up with capturing icky, frilly princesses and fighting brave, shiny knights. One day, he went for a walk through the woods and he saw the gingerbread man. He wanted to be a hero and save him from the mean, greedy fox. The gingerbread man told him to go away because there is no dragon in his story. Next, he saw a boy climbing a beanstalk. It was Jack. He wanted to be a hero and save him from the nasty, huge giant. Jack told him to go away because there is no dragon in his story. Suddenly, the giant sneezed. Achoo! It went dark. Then the dragon had an idea. He was scared, but he really, really wanted to be a hero. He took a deep breath and... Fire burst out of his mouth and he lit up the sun. A hero at last. In this lesson we're going to be looking at verbs in our story. And a verb is a doing or a being word. So I say, a verb is a doing or being word. We say... A verb is a doing or being word. You say. Check with your child that they know what a verb is. Some examples of verbs are walk, swim, sleep, hop, jump. They are things where we are doing those things. So for example, we have got sleep or sleeping walk or walking, swim or swimming. With your child, can you think of any more verbs uh, that you do every day? We're going to be looking for the verbs in parts of our sentences this lesson. So we've got, there was a grumpy dragon. There was a grumpy dragon. One of the verbs that a lot of the time we miss off is was. It is a being word. There was a grumpy dragon. He was being. In this sentence, there was a grumpy dragon. My verb is was. I would underline the word was in my sentence. There was a grumpy dragon. Was. In sentence number two, he wanted to be a hero. He wanted to be a hero. Here, my doing word is wanted. My verb is wanted. It is what he's doing. He's wanting to be a hero. So in this sentence, I would underline the word wanted. Have a look at sentence number three. He was fed up with saving princesses. What word is the doing word? The doing or the being word? Which word is the verb? He was fed up with saving princesses. In this sentence, the verb is saving. That is what he is doing. He is saving the princesses. Saving is the verb. Again, the same sentences as the day before. This time you're going to be looking for the verbs. The verbs in each sentence. 
Once upon a time there was a grumpy dragon. In this sentence with your child you need to be looking for the verb. Number two, he was fed up with capturing princesses. Number three, the dragon walked through the woods. Number four, he wanted to save him from the mean fox. Number five, the gingerbread man told him to go away. Number six, next he saw a boy climbing a beanstalk. Number seven, he wanted to save him from the ugly giant. Number eight, Jack said to him, go away. Number nine, suddenly the giant sneezed. And number 10, then the dragon blew the fire to make the sun. In these sentences, there may be more than one verb. So be careful while you're looking because there may be more than one doing or being word. With your child, what I'd like you to do is think about what these images show as part of the story. Get your child to tell you what part of the story this is. So one day, practice with your child saying the story using these images to help you. I'm going to look at the sounds that come up. So we've got some trigraphs and digraphs. I Mm, uh, uh, ah. Uh. These two here, uh and uh, sound the same but they have got a different spelling. We've got I R uh or you are uh. They both make the uh sound. This one at the bottom is ah. Uh. It does sound quite similar but they are different sounds. We've got uh uh, ah, uh. I, mm, uh, uh, uh. With your child, can you have a look at these sounds and practice them with them? I, mm, uh, uh, ah. Uh. Going okay, to do them out of order this time, so you can practice these with your children. Again, we're going to remind ourselves of the story just so that when your child comes to write the story, they're really, really familiar with it. Again, if you want to join in with it, that would be really good, help you practice uh, the story that they're going to be writing. Once upon a time, there was a grumpy dragon. He was in a huff because he wanted to be a hero. He was fed up with capturing icky, frilly princesses and fighting brave, shiny knights. One day he went for a walk through the woods and he saw the gingerbread man. He wanted to be a hero and save him from the mean greedy fox. The gingerbread man told him to go away because there is no dragon in his story. Next he saw a boy climbing a beanstalk. It was Jack. He wanted to be a hero and save him from the nasty huge giant. Jack told him to go away because there is no dragon in his story. Suddenly, the giant sneezed. Achoo! It went dark. Then, the dragon had an idea. He was scared, but he really, really wanted to be a hero. He took a deep breath and... Fire burst out of his mouth and he lit up the sun. A hero at last. We're going to be looking at nouns again because we're going to be writing our expanded noun phrases today. So a noun names a person, animal, place or thing. I say a noun names a person, animal, place or thing. We say a noun names a person, animal, place or thing. You say
To begin with, the noun that we're going to be looking at is fox. So we've got noun, fox. We're then going to be looking again at noun phrase, the fox or a fox. Okay, they'll just be the two words for a noun phrase. Fox, noun, the fox, noun phrase. We can then add in some more detail using adjectives. The greedy fox. That becomes an expanded noun phrase. It's got more information about the noun of our fox. It doesn't have to be the greedy fox, it could be a greedy fox. There could be more than one adjective in there as well. It could be the mean greedy fox. So you could have two adjectives in there. If you have two adjectives in your expanded noun phrase, it will need a comma between both of the adjectives. We're going to first of all think of some adjectives about our fox. So first of all, we're going to think about the colour of our fox. I'm going to give you a few and then I'd like you to finish the rest of your uh, mind map alongside your child. So I'm going to say it's an orange fox. Might change that a little bit as well, maybe use the word golden. We could have a think of what it feels like, the texture. So it might be furry or soft. And I might want to think about his personality. So is he mean? vicious, cruel, unkind. What kind of fox is his personality like? So I'm going to write down mean and unkind. So this is the beginning of your mind map about the fox. What I'd like you to do is create a whole page worth of adjectives all about the fox. Now we're going to look at using some of these adjectives to create an expanded noun phrase. The first noun phrase that I'm going to write out is just going to use one adjective. So I'm going to write the orange fox. Again, I'm just counting how many words I want in my expanded noun phrase. The orange fox. So I've got three words, so when I write my sentence, I need to check that it's got those three words. I don't need a capital letter or a full stop because it's not a full sentence. the orange fox. Now I want to think about how else I can write about my fox using an expanded noun phrase. I want to use more than one adjective this time, so I need to remember to use a comma between those two adjectives. I want to write the soft golden fox. So I've got four words in my sentence this time, the soft golden fox. With your child, what I want you to do is using that mind map of adjectives that you had is to write some noun phrases about the fox. There can't be any verbs in there because then it becomes a sentence. We need the orange fox, for example, which is an expanded noun phrase. We've got the noun 
and we've got some information about that noun. Again here we've got an expanded noun phrase, this time it's got two adjectives. There will not be a capital letter and there will not be a full stop for an expanded noun phrase. So have a go at writing some of those expanded noun phrases with your children. Now we're going to have a look at some adjectives about the giant in our story. So I'm going to think about his size, huge, enormous, might want to think of him as being tall. And if I think about what he looks like, he might make him ugly. If you think about his personality, he's not a very happy giant, so he might be grumpy. Or moody. With your child, I want you to have a think about some adjectives that would describe the giant. Add them to your new mind map of adjectives about the giant so that we can go on to write our expanded noun phrases. So again, we're going to write some expanded noun phrases about our giant. The first one I'm going to do, I'm just going to use one adjective. I'm going to write the huge giant or a huge giant. Okay, I've got three words there. I need to make sure that when I've written it, I've still only got the three words, a huge giant. Uh, my next one, I want to think about using two adjectives, a huge giant. This time I'm going to write the enormous moody giant. So I've got four words, the enormous moody giant. Again, making sure I don't have a capital letter and a full stop for my expanded noun phrases. If you can have a go at writing some expanded noun phrases about the giant with your child. <laughs> 